Hello everyone. Today we'll be discussing how to memorize the initial position of a chess game. So, um, memorizing a chess game is quite challenging and it has been bugging me for the last four years. But I think so. I finally come up with a system that really is a uh, good uh, and it works. And I've been I'm started practicing in it and I hope to get good. So, um, as uh, any uh, chess person knows, there are three phases of uh, chess. That is, the opening, the middle game, and the end game. and uh, it takes a lot of effort and skill to identify whether um, the game has transitioned into a middle game or the end game so that's why memorizing blindfolded you really need to know when the middle game starts when the end game starts and also you need to know some kind of common openings or common kind of attack like knight and queen attack so these are the things that you really need to know otherwise you will have the game memorized but you'll never be able to think of a move so uh, having that clear let's get started on uh, memorizing the initial position so the strategy for the kings that i have is you don't need to memorize them for at least 20 to 30 moves because mostly the uh, white king will be castling here on g1 square and uh, from e1 uh, or mostly it will stay on the e1 square and we can easily keep a mental track of that and black king black king generally is a bit more adventurous so it generally mostly goes to f8 square like in some kind of sicilian setups or, i don't know death setups uh, it can long castle because like black always likes to do opposite castling sometimes attacks or something so c8 f8 g8 and again that's not too hard to keep track of the king position of black and how i'll be memorizing uh, in uh, like um, the pieces is first i'll memorize uh, the white piece and a corresponding uh, black piece and for uh, memorizing a chess game you have to memorize both the colors you have to memorize your own color and the black so suppose if you are playing um, with white you have to memorize like your white moves and your black moves and suppose you are playing blindfolded with black again i recommend that you follow the same format of memorizing white pieces first and black pieces first because if you really know how to calculate the next move it really doesn't matter that you have memorized white pieces like uh, uh, in the first place as a pre prefix kind of thing and uh, the black pieces are the uh, post fix kind of thing so okay now we know that the kings don't have to be memorized and how can we memorize um, the pieces so basically for a long time i thought uh, maybe we can just uh, categorize uh the the pieces as some kind of warrior or something so this will be a elephant this will be a knight or something but then there are 32 pieces to memorize so that gets very very difficult so what we can really do is we can categorize the pieces as five kinds of pieces so there are rook pieces here there is knight pieces bishop pawns and um king and queen so as i mentioned kings don't need to be memorized for quite a long and the same is true for pawns actually because um, a fundamentally a chess player should really understand a pawn structure because it really de determines the dynamics of the game so like um, you can just divide the pawns into two segments the queen side pawn and the king side pawn same with here and mostly the pawns will be locked up with each other or they'll be in a potential where uh, this and this can be captured in one move so this kind of potential can exist so really we don't need to memorize the pawn structures we can just re remember the essence of the game or uh, like if it can be king's gambit uh, declined or something so we can just remember the essence of the game and we don't need to memorize this so now uh, from 32 pieces we have got down to 8 8 and this so we have minus 18 pieces so in the opening phase we really need to memorize how many uh, 36 minus 18 so that's um, uh that's six that's like um uh 16 minus 2 14 pieces so like only 14 pieces you need to memorize on um, uh during the end game we need to memorize the pawn because like yeah you need to do the counting when the pawn promotes to a queen or some it promotes to on the last rank you really need to do the counting so at that point you have to remember at what rank it is you really don't need to memorize it complete square you just really need to know the ranks so like pawns are really lightweight information so you really don't need to put an effort to memorize okay so now let's uh, uh, see how we can memorize the initial position so uh, first we memorize the white and correspondingly where the black pieces are positioned so uh, black uh, white pieces are here and here so this is um so what i'll do is i'll just take the letters literally So we know that the rook is on a1 square in classical notation. This rook is on a1 square, but I don't like memorizing numbers because numbers uh, like 
we, we are really good in memorizing images and numbers you have to create an image list of the numbers so i just like to create an image list out of the letters so i copy this whole whole a to h thing and put it here so this is a b c d e f g h like that so this is a a for me and this is h h so together it's a ha ah like like getting surprised so rooks are initially surprised so that's what you can remember so at the initial chessboard rooks are initially surprised these rooks it's h a um h h uh sorry a h uh, and a h h so this is a a h a aha and a h and a h and h h so a aha ha a something like that so you get better you get the gist the initial position of rooks are like a and h mostly so okay so you don't need to really memorize and you won't forget it <laughs> while your eyes are closed next what how, how we categorize is the dark square bishop because like they are important and bishops are a little bit more important than knight so next i'll go into bishop so bishop dark square bishop this is c and a so c a is camera so the white bishop is holding a camera white dark square bishop and this is f and h so fish so dark square bishop initially on the board black and white they are like camera fish so a photo of a fish so that's how initially they are placed up next is the light square bishop so f a and c h so f a is father for me c h is cheese so my father is eating cheese and that's the image that i will have for uh, light square bishops so um, and next i will be coming to queens so there are uh, sorry knights knights there are four knights so and they are like um, indistinguishable like there's no like dark square light square kind of thing so knights we can image imagine as b a f a so bafa some kind of arabic snack or something bafa and b h and g h so bhari ghost so uh, arabic uh, genie is eating a very uh, kind of weird kind of sweet so that's the initial position of the knights so um, and, and the queen queen is d a is dagger d h is dhoni so dhoni holding a dagger so some kind of that so initially we have rooks surprising rooks then this kind of fish picture then we have this um, fish picture then we have uh, dark square bishop light square bishop as father eating cheese then this is like dhoni holding dagger all pawns on the second rank we don't care king we don't care because it's not going to move for a long time so so how much information that was really so for the opening position we just had to remember rooks like surprise and then um, one kind of fishy image for one kind of bishops one kind of um, uh, father eating cheese kind of image for the other bishop the knights being like a, a arabic ghost genie some kind of that kind of thing you have to remember so th that was only that much information you needed for the initial position and as we we try to exchange the pieces uh, the information will get lesser and lesser so how uh, so when we'll be playing blindfold we have to update this whole information um, like every time so every time you make a move and your opponent makes a move you update it you don't update it after half a move like when after half a play you update it after a whole move because like you don't want to update it too many times so when you play he plays when you play you update it so um, so like you need a some kind of a technique and what else suggest is method of lo loci or memory palace technique so you can just store the rook cluster the dark square bishop cluster the light square bishop cluster the knight cluster the queen positions and after 20 to 30 moves if you are aware you have to remember where are the pawns at what rank and where are the kings and for the chess sense you have to remember what is the pawn dynamics and that's it so like that's how you can memorize the game if you have any doubts and comments or better suggestions on how how this technique can improve please leave down a comment and i hope to uh, explain the further parts of it more and take some examples like end games or middle games and how you can memorize that so all the best for your chess skills and uh, see you next time <laughs>